ya. Hmm. Okay, so uh, the fundamental relation between the uh, the difference quotient in Riemann sums, which later on will be will will tr transition into uh, the fundamental relation between the integral and the derivative. Okay, so so uh, so right now all we have these two are ha have had in common uh, Riemann sums here. This one one, one page, and the uh, difference quotient the other page. Uh, the only thing that they have in common is the uh, the partitions. Uh, and uh, otherwise, its, it's computations are, are, are very straightforward. Uh, so difference quotient right here uh, on the right, um, rise over the run, and the, uh, this previous page is the uh, Riemann sum, which is uh, just the sum of the, um, all the areas, pretty much. But the, the interpretation, once again, is easy to think uh, about, is the, uh, uh, you take the velocity uh, as a function, sample it, and you get your location roughly uh, roughly estimated. So uh, let me uh, find the uh, let me find uh, the um, this one uh, the Excel file. So this one is uh, uh, once again the location, and from the location we got velocity. So one graph, second graph we have velocity. That is the once again the uh, the difference quotient. Yeah, difference quotient, dq, and this one is from the velocity through displacement, which is kind of secondary, uh, intermediate step, we get the location. So that, these are the Riemann sums, okay? Riemann sums, different co difference quotients. Okay, so uh, the formulas are now uncomplicated, um, and... Um, uh, the, the this one uh, especially I mean it looks long the, the one at the bottom but the one at the top is not so it's in, if you compute it incrementally just as a spreadsheet does uh, the formula is truly elementary it's just multiply add multiply add okay so little by little here you get the whole thing and the difference quotient is I suppose it's not incremental so uh, you have uh, two subtractions and division so that's actually is is more complicated. Okay, so uh, uh, what is what is the relation? Well, the relation is obvious from the from the setup, uh, getting the from the velocity, getting location from location, getting velocity. We should make a full tr full round trip from the location to velocity, and then back to the exact same location, or, or at least the the, the hope. That's the hope. Um, uh, the the and it is it is it is working out. The the only uh, difference will be that as always the location is uh, if you know the velocity you only know the location uh, fully uh, if you know also the initial location. Otherwise, the, an the answer is ambiguous. But before, before we examine that uh, in, a, in a more uh, uh, explicit way, uh, let me take a look at the... Um, uh, let me illustrate it in a, in a somewhat informal way. Uh, great. Okay, so uh, so what I want to do is to to plot uh, a function that is uh, really simple, and things are really especially simple when the um, uh, uh, when the uh, increment of time is is one. Okay, so in other words, we're talking about say if we're talking per hour, then uh, then what happens is if your velocity was five miles five miles per hour, then after an hour, you are five miles ahead. Okay, so so let, let me try uh, to do that. So um, so I'll start with, with the velocity. I'll start with the velocity, and then I'll plot I'll plot the based on the velocity. I'll plot the um, the location. Okay, and then then it is it is really uh, becomes. Um, very explicit. Okay, well, just in case, one more. Okay, so uh, okay, let me have a have a maybe the axis somewhere. The so the x-axis 
uh, the y-axis doesn't matter and uh, mm, oh, let me pull it down a little bit okay so that's the x-axis and I am uh, going to be plotting uh, the velocity here okay uh, Velocity. Okay, so so once again, one hour at a time, and I'll plot. Uh, so that's the x-axis. So it will be uh, positive. Will be above the x-axis. Let me make them orange. Say uh, like this. Okay, so uh, okay. Okay, see what, I, what I'm doing here is I have marked the uh, three, uh, three, during these uh, three hours, my velocity was two, then three, then two miles per hour. Okay, uh, let me give one more. Okay, and then, uh, and then, and then I slowed down, then one, one miles an hour, and then what has happened, actually I turned around, so let me go backwards and I'll, 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 I'll fill these with, uh, with uh, say, uh, uh, blue okay so I'm, I'm then I'm moving two miles an hour in the opposite direction then say four miles an hour in the opposite direction five miles in the opposite direction then two and then and then I turn around again okay so then I go oops the wrong color this one okay so well suppose this was my trip as you can see four and four and well go like make another four uh, and four hours of the um, uh, uh, four so twelve hour trip, and as you can see, the the, the speed was varying. And then I want to find out uh, where my um, uh, where my location is. So that will be the next. So how I, I'll just I'll just stack them up. Okay. So suppose my initial location is at zero. So so uh, let me say uh, maybe maybe this is. Uh, this is my, well, maybe I'll put it lower. I'm not sure if I have enough room. So suppose I'm starting with uh, my location over here. Okay, and then and then I'll take, well, what has happened next? I tr traveled for two hours forward. Well, it's orange again. Okay, so during the first hour, after two hours of, of, of traveling at two hours an hour, I am two hours, uh, two, two, two miles ahead, okay? After two hours, you see what happens? I'm already two hours ahead, so this is what I do, okay? So, so I take those um, blocks on left, and I stack, th stack them up, sort of. So I, I just try to, uh, I stretch them horizontally so that we not only know where we are, but we also, we have a graph of some function. So the next one, uh, I, I travel for two hours, uh, one hour, two miles an hour, and then I travel the one hour, uh, one hour at one miles an hour in the same direction, so once again stack up. So that gives me the, the beginning of the function, so, so look, look at the, my, my location, so uh, one mile, so one hour at a time, it will be zero, two, five, seven, and eight. That's where I have been. Okay, and now I turn around and start moving backwards. And then, so I'll, I'll, I'm sticking, still sticking up, but I'm going backwards, so. Okay, so I'm going backwards. So I'm already now six, hour, uh, six hours ahead of the, of the uh, initial, my initial uh, position. Then I go four, and then I go five. and then two more, okay? So I have moved, as you can see, it's clear that I, I am five miles in the opposite direction from the state of, from the original position. Okay, and then, and then I could continue on uh, doing the same thing. Now I'm moving forward again, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm sorry, three, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so at the end of my trip, I am uh, three. Uh, what is it? Seven miles in the original direction. 
So that, that's, that's sort of calculus for you. And uh, uh, so velocity here, location there. So the, the transition from left to right is, whoops, that's not it. Um, so what's this transition from left to right? What? Uh, no, no. I anti, yes, and, but what I, what I meant is, uh, is a, a primarily uh, just the Riemann sums. So if the function is plotted on the left, then the, its, its function of Riemann sums will be plotted on the right. And ultimately, it will be an antiderivative uh, as, as we, once we switch from, from incremental functions to continuous functions, uh, it will be antiderivative eventually. So antiderivative here. So and this is, this is the function, any function. On left and on right, it's, it's antiderivative, okay? And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, well, uh, what's missing? Acceleration. Uh, well, fair enough. Uh, it, it does. Uh, we could we could do that, even though not not, and we would have to go first learn to how to go in the opposite direction. So we need to now learn how to go from location to to velocity, which is the second, the other side of the coin. So that's the coin how we get to from location to velocity. And now we're looking at the opposite direction. And fortunately, the, uh, it's, it's all, all right here. So suppose let's ignore the first picture. I ignore the first picture. And, and let's just see uh, how we do uh, the difference quotient. That's the next step is the difference quotient. It is especially easy difference quotient because the denominator is 1. OK, so the, the, these intervals are 1s. So when we divide, there is no division. So just as uh, when we did Riemann sums, we didn't have to multiply because every, everything was multiplied by 1. And now everything divided by 1. So, so all we have to do is for difference quotients, we have to look at the, at the, at the differences. Uh, well, let me maybe try to uh, let's see. Or do you see what, what's going to happen? Maybe. So, uh, so how about I take this function and kind of a simplify it in this manner. Uh, so, so let me plot that function more and more explicitly so there would be no uh, no doubts about it, uh, what we're looking at. So it's going to be the same function. So we, I'm not changing anything. I'm just changing the, my, my presentation. So, so I want just to, to uh, a, a point where, where I am at every time. So this is uh, where I am. These, these are the points where uh, uh, indicating the locations. Right. So at the end of each period, as well as at the beginning, I know my location, and it is marked by that star, uh, that that dot. Okay. Okay. So so then the, these colorful things are really kind of standing in the way because we don't really care. Look at it. We we these will be my location. This is my function giving me locations. Whatever is behind it, it is actually, this is an approximation of what truly has happened. But these are the locations based on the, uh, well, it doesn't matter what based on. At this point, I could just once again hide it. Uh, this is my, uh, this made of red dots, is, is, these are my locations. So once again, these are locations. So location is a function of time. Okay, so so what I do next is I'm gonna, I'm gonna find the derivative my, my velocities or average velocities from these locations. So once again, the the x-axis is time, and what we have we travel we record things one hour at a time. Okay, so um, so I don't want any confusion here. So that's not the same axis. Okay, so. Well, uh, so what I'm going to be doing is then uh, then I'm I'm plotting. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, I'm plotting. Uh, I'm plotting now 
I am plotting now uh, the uh, uh, now I'm plotting the velocity. The velocity. The velocity. Okay, so uh, uh, technically it will be the average velocity. The average velocity. So location. So suppose we don't know anything, and this is the transition we are making. How do we do it? Rise over the run, right? So so the run will be one hour at every time, and the the rise will be is 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 visible. So what's what is my velocity during this this period of time that I'm care I care about from uh, the beginning of, of when it, everything started to uh, one hour ahead? What was my two? It was two. Okay. How about I mark it with green? That that is my speed during the first hour of of my trip. Then it becomes what? Three. Three. Okay, then it becomes two and one. Okay, and then uh, then what does it become? Negative two. Negative two. Let me go blue here. Negative two. What's what's next? Negative four. Negative four. Again, uh, negative four, and then negative five is it? Negative five. Right, and uh, negative two. And then what? Three. Three positive. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, two is two positive, and three positive. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Uh, uh, two, three. Uh, three, four. Uh, I'm, yeah. Okay. Three. Uh, three, four. Okay, two and and three, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see if if it works out. Uh, if it has worked out, we did this independently. We were not looking at the beginning. Okay. So, okay. So yeah, it is the same graph. Well, so certainly not surprising at all that the beginning of the graph is the same as the graph. So we started the velocity, found location from location, we found the velocity, and that's the same velocity that we came from. Okay. So that is the fundamental relation. Not only we can go from one to the other. Both in both directions, but in fact they are kind of inverses. They, these transitions are inverses of each other because you make a full trip and without losing anything. Uh, I, I won't lie to you and say that is entirely unambiguous because if we start from location instead, if we start from location instead and make the full circle, then we're not gonna exactly arrive to the same location because because of the ambiguity of the initial location. Uh, with uh, that's that's the thing about locations. There are two two travelers. If they follow follow this, they could they could choose to follow to walk with the exact same speed, and therefore the 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 uh, uh, the, uh, the starting point will be the same, but the the locations will be certainly different. So that that's how they are moving. Uh, the the difference distance between they will be will be won't be changing, but but the uh, if we try from that velocity to determine the location, they will be ambiguous. The answer will be ambiguous. Um, okay, so the, but at least this is this is a. a Two round trips, two round trips. Uh, uh, um, even some difference quotient comes back. The other one is uh, difference quotient, then round trip. It takes you you back, but with uh, with a certain uh, ambiguity. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at how this works out with formulas. It's really not uh, not too complicated. We have uh, these two functions f and g, uh, and um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's just add them together. Uh, where is that thing? Okay, so g of where is my g? Yeah, here it is. G is the is the difference quotient. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on, that that's not the right formula. No, it is. It is. It, it is. Okay. So so suppose um, now let, let's try to repeat the trip we just did. So we start with the velocity and then proceed to. Uh, do Riemann sum. So this is suppose we have the velocity, f is the velocity, and we have built a new function. Okay, so uh, so this is a new function. New function uh, f. Uh, I'm sorry, not f. G, uh, and uh, it is defined at uh, defined at the nodes.
define at the nodes, these are the nodes, the, uh, the endpoints of the intervals, okay? Okay, so our original function was, uh, was sampled at the sample points, those middle points here over there, uh, over here, but then we define our function at the, at the nodes. Okay, so that gives me the, uh, uh, that gives me the uh, location from the velocity. Okay, and then, and then now let's try to execute with this G. Uh, so let's now apply difference quotient to G. In, order, in other words, we're trying to see if we will get back to F if we, 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 we proceed in that fashion. So uh, we'll, lo we'll look at this. This is the formula. See, that's the formula. That's how, this is how we compute our uh, 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 difference quotient. So, um, so what is it? Uh, del D G D, uh, the delta G delta X is equal to... Uh, uh, okay, g x k plus one. Uh, yeah, x k plus one minus g g x k over x k plus one minus x k. The difference quotient. So I'm just copying this formula over here. Okay, and then what happens? Well, the, 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 let me just put the numerator as as it is intended, denominator as it's meant to be, delta x k. Okay, and then uh, uh, so that's the difference quotient. Uh, of our function, define indeed at x, x k, x k plus 1 for each different location. And, uh, um, uh, uh, and then this one is defined at c k, the, uh, the sample point within that interval, uh, x k, x k plus 1. So this is x k, x k plus 1, and c k is here somewhere. So so the the uh, 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 the point where the, the two functions are defined varies from one to the next. Okay, so so the formula right there above uh, for g, uh, I guess I should just say this is what g is of of x k. That's what g is. Okay, and now let's we're subtracting two consecutive values of of g. Okay, so. In the meantime, we know what the difference between two consecutive values of g is. It is that extra term that we add. That's at this point the uh, the uh, 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 recursive formula at the top is actually more convenient because we know that every time we proceed to the next interval, we add we add this term, which actually stands for for displacement. So if we subtract now instead of adding, that is the difference, that term over there is the difference between two consecutive values of uh, of even sum. So, well, there you go. So it will be uh, f of ck delta xk. Okay, and then naturally, as, as, as planned, uh, everything cancels out. And as you can see, that is, we do end up with the same function we started with. Okay, so you can you can see it, it's 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 all here. Um, I, I don't want to do the uh, illustration again. We just did it uh, with, with that little uh, with those little boxes. Uh, but now once again, so the function f. So let's just do look at the algebra for a change without no without any pictures. So uh, so we have a, a direct formula or incremental formula doesn't matter of of the uh, of the even sum. So you add a, you you take uh, evaluate f at the sample points f c one. Multiply by the width, then again, uh, uh, multiply by uh, the next term, the next term, the ne next term. You, you make it uh, uh, as many steps as necessary, uh, one at a time. And for each of these uh, intervals, there will be a new value of this new function g. Okay, so uh, that gives me, if you like, uh, the our location from the velocity. Okay, and now we're going backwards, and we're, we're doing the difference quotient. Okay, so we're doing difference quotient with the, with the function that we have acquired. So that new function g now subject to difference quotient. We subtract what has been added and multiplied. Look at it. The operations are clearly opposite of each other. So every time we uh, in, when we did the uh, Riemann sum, we multiplied and added. Well, where are those where are those operations? Over here, multiplication and addition here. Okay, so every time that's what you did. In the meantime, what do we do now? Subtract and divide. 
and divide. Well, it's not surprising, it shouldn't be surprising at all that we, the, the, these operations cancel each other. So add then, uh, multiply then add, or, and then subtract and divide. Well, no surprise, we're going to end up in the exact same location uh, where we started. Okay, so, so uh, things cancel out. Uh, similarly, I don't want to uh, go through that computation again, but uh, if you go in the opposite direction for with the second page, so here this is how we apply the uh, difference quotient first. Now apply, apply Riemann sum to the new function f, okay, and the uh, the result is uh, is the original, which is g. Okay, so. So once again, two uh, two round trips, two round trips. Uh, the uh, the the computation certainly once again the uh, the these uh, four simple algebraic operations reappear, and uh, and then if they uh, carried out consecutively, they cancel each other. Okay, it cancel out all, all of them. Subtraction once again. So this time it is you start with uh, uh, subtraction followed by division. Okay, uh, in the meantime and followed by and followed by addition and multiplication. Okay, so that's, that's why it works out. Okay, so uh, so that is, you can see how, how the relation between uh, 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 integration and differentiation uh, is already reversed at this stage before we got to all the limits. Uh, the relation, the fundamental relation between, between those two uh, is satisfied. So that's, that's what, uh, what these things are. Um, so once again, uh, uh, the relation was between uh, difference quotient and Riemann sum, okay, back and forth, okay, and then as we go with the limit, remember n goes to infinity, those, the number of intervals goes to infinity, uh, then the uh, difference quotient goes towards the derivative of that function, and the uh, Riemann sum goes to the integral. And we already know that the integral, well, well we don't know, now we, we, are, we are about about to find out that the integral is uh, is the same as uh, uh, an antiderivative uh, of our function, and the uh, the, the the terms can be ch ch uh, uh, used uh, in, uh, interchangeably because well, uh, the, but the integral is the actual term that that is commonly used, and the uh, antiderivative kind of, kind of fades away because they, everybody knows that they they are they are the same. So once again, it is the limit. When you take the limit uh, with the uh, um, uh, the well de delta x if you like goes to zero that's that's another way it's it's the same thing n goes to infinity or delta x goes to infinity those uh, those uh, partition becomes uh, small and small intervals small and small the the bars that we have here so you st you you start like like this and then in the next one same function but those bars are will be will be looking like this and at the end naturally as 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 n goes to infinity uh the end result will be simply a full um uh, a curved entirely curved at the top it's not going to be looking like this when you have uh, uh, um, uh, flat tops of those bars of the Riemann sums even here you, you there you can imagine that they're they, they're very thin but still they have flat tops so these are still rectangles in the second picture uh, but uh, at the end, it would, will become uh, the uh, the so like this. Uh, it will be literally uh, cur it's like a, it's like a sandbox. So think about a sandbox. So everything is is straight except for the top because the the sand has no uh, it's not been uh, kept down or or straightened out. There is no some any kind of plow on top of it. So it has some uh, some unknown a um, uh, shape. Um, and that shape is is given by by our function. Okay, so uh, so y equal f of x is our function. How long did it take me to figure all this out? I do not know. It it's not like it was uh, it was just just about to be done. Uh, I mean, he said I was standing on the shoulders of giants, and that's why I saw so, so far. But that that was he was very nice, uh, <laughs> modest. But I don't know how how he he uh, figured this all all of this out. Uh, yeah. It makes me wonder if, he just, if it took him like a year, you know, uh, or if it just came to him in a week. 
No, well, he start. I think he started very strong, and he got the main ideas right, right there. And literally, he had some very nice. I think it was was it like a plague or something, and he had to hide from London in in some in co the countryside, and then he wrote the, his best best stuff there. But then he he did the rest, not the rest of the time of the he life he was spending. He uh, but at least a couple of decades he spent on on polishing the stuff and didn't publish everything very quickly. Uh, at the end of the his life, he turned to uh, uh, in, in studying Bi the Bible instead. So he thought it was more important. Uh, so, <laughs> so I don't know. And they all he did all the physics too. Uh, so I don't know. So just just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, but so we have advantage. First of all, we are going. It's not like we're standing on the shoulders of giants. It's all all been worked out and written up and polished and, and presented. And now we have an extra advantage over uh, whatever they had. It is it is the computers. Uh, and they, this this is this is solved with computers. So we we do for we did the um, the area of the circle approximated with nothing but computers and the the crucial part and that was for those new discoverers that was the uh, the hard part uh, limits still were hard to to quite understand and it was not worked out in entirely until the 19th century uh, what 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 those limits are what's those infinitesimal values infinitely small infinitely large values are and uh, uh, and that, that's those little epsilon deltas that we we, we, we mentioned in the very beginning uh, there they, they were worked out. The, Newton didn't didn't bother a lot with those things, but he, he also was into physics, so so he didn't uh, uh, didn't try to to make an argument entirely uh, bulletproof. So uh, anyway, uh, anyway, uh, so this is where we are. So this is uh, well, this one, this one is the, called the fundamental theorem. of calculus. So the integration and differentiation are the opposite of each other. Uh, so we will revisit this this uh, uh, shortly. Um, let me write it out uh, just in case. So integral from a to b fx dx is equal to f of b minus f of a for any antiderivative. F capital of F lowercase. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, under the assumption, certainly there are assumptions there, so we'll work out this uh, uh, this uh, at length um, uh, more more carefully. Um, but the there is there is some some topic that we have to address first. So before we we uh, revisit all of these uh, issues, all the way to the fundamental theorem, and then do some computations. Uh, including the, we have to learn how to compute the area of the um, of the circle without referring to the um, uh, without uh, approximations, but exactly. Okay, so so there there is this uh, extra piece of notation, and that is, that comes from uh, uh, from the from Riemann sums, and it it is re it reappears throughout calculus. And elsewhere, and so we, we can't really get around it anyway. And that is the uh, the sigma notation. The sigma notation is how to abbreviate uh, this this business f of c one delta x one f of c two delta x two dot 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 that's especially inconvenient f of c n delta x n okay so that's the Riemann sum and uh, it is just not uh, convenient uh, to use it is first of all long and then uh, it is also um, um, cumbersome to to uh, trace the indices and it is repetitive Two. Okay, so uh, so if you want to get rid of this repetition uh, and and I actually see the um, the similarity between between this and the integration, you you turn to 
uh, uh, to, sigma, uh, to the sigma notation, and it comes from uh, just looking back to uh, to sequences. So say a1, a2, a n. Uh, the good news is that we, we at least early on, we're not going to worry about infinite sequences, uh, which were what we started with uh, this course. So a1, a n is a sequence, and now suppose uh, we want to add them. So we're talking about a1 plus a2 plus a n. And what is the short notation? This is the short notation, sigma which is uh, the Greek letter, the replacement for the letter S, and S stands for summation. Okay, so sum. And it reads as sum. So A sub I, frequently, I from 1 to N. Okay, so that, that's the notation. That's the whole, uh, the whole sigma notation. Uh, but um, uh, it, is, it is worthwhile because, it's, as you can see, it's more compact. The dot 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 business is hidden inside of it because all we do is to to uh, demonstrate where uh, point out that our what is what is the variable of our sequence, uh, and that is i i that 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 uh, subscript i that here it is i is equal to one i is equal to two i is equal to n the way we did it early on remember to, especially when you want to figure out a, a formula for the nth variable of the uh, of the of the sequence that that index comes into play. So, for example, if I have a sequence one, two, three, okay, then I know that my sequence is this is a one, a two, a three. I know that a n will be n. Okay, so that's that's the formula that that I want to use. Except except instead of n, we are we prefer to use i. So i i stands for index, and it is uh, 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 and the last element of the sequence is n. Okay, it's just, just a matter of convenience. So sum of a sub i sequence, frequently put in, in those braces to indicate that it is, it is the whole thing is there, uh, uh, from 1 to, to n. So the index runs from 1 to n, so which means that there are n terms. So uh, as an example, say I go summation 1 over i i from 2 to 5. What does it mean? It means literally that I go with, uh, I change my index, I probably should start with the index, and I write i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, i is equal to 4, i is equal to 5, and then substitute these i's into the formula. So that is, this notation over here is the, uh, the uh, explicit formula for the sequence, and that's, and that, that, that's what makes it, uh, everything so compact. So then I plug it in, I have one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. And then uh, the summation uh, sign appears between them. Okay, so that, that's the, uh, that is uh, uh, the primary thing here. So as you can see, you can start, uh, you have a sequence. It could be infinite. It could be infinite sequence. There is, there is nothing wrong with that. But you pick uh, uh, finitely many usually terms. In, in calculus, too, you'll, you'll have to deal with the um, infinite sequences as well. And then uh, the, the upper, upper limit over here will be, will be infinity. Okay, so if you want to add infinity many terms, which is very dangerous, a dangerous activity um, because you don't know what you're going to end up with. Uh, but uh, as long as uh, within this, uh, uh, what we're talking about, there, there's also finitely many uh, uh, terms, and that's why you can do uh, any kind of algebra. You know, it, it, this one has four terms, uh, four terms or n terms, there is really no, no difference uh, to worry about. So I can move the terms, it's the same as one-third plus one-half uh, plus one-fifth plus one-fourth. Okay, so it's the same. So we are dealing with numbers, and this one, the notation is certainly looks a little bit intimidating early on, uh, but behind it is, is this. Uh, addition, addition of numbers, it's just uh, uh, we do not say how many, uh, how many uh, we have there. Okay, so uh, so the um, well summation. So I uh, have uh, have another one. Say say k or zero. That's another index. Is a uh, good k n is also used as long as it is uh, as long as it is clear that uh, the the index has to be it has to appear as at the bottom of the uh, the bottom limit. 
So k is equal to zero, and the what is assumed but never written is k is equal to three. So k runs from zero to k is equal from zero to three, and there are, therefore there are four uh, the, those elements here. So uh, and then the answer might be well, I have twenty here. So uh, frequently we have a specific sequence here, and if it is specific, then the, this is a specific number. Because if the if everything is specific uh, is specified, the sequence is specified, the limits, the part of the sequence that you're taking also specified with those zero and three, then you just add them together, and the end you have a number. Okay, so so it is truly just a notation. There is there is nothing uh, kind of a new mathematics to worry about here. It's not literally uh, calculus. It's just just a, a convenient tool, and. Um, um, And uh, you should go be able to go back and forth uh, from uh, from the uh, regular notation with da 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 to the sigma notation and back. So what I just showed you, I I, I went with uh, uh, from sigma notation to expanded notation w without dots. But uh, you certainly, if I say right as a one, I, I, I wonder if you can see. So uh, one over two plus one over four plus one over eight plus one over 32. Okay, so can you write this in the sigma notation? So let me start it for you, sigma. Okay, so, so the, the first thing is you have to identify what the formula is. Uh, the um, What is though so special about these terms? The multiples of two. Uh, multiples of two. Okay, so so what what should be my term? What should I write here? Uh, one over i. No, it says power of two. So one over two i, right? Yeah. Okay, so and then what only remains to to indicate the the first and the last term. So the very first term i is equal to. One and the last one. Five. five. Okay, so that that's a that's it. So once again, to emphasize this, so these are finite sequences. So dot 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 should not uh, detract uh, you from from understanding that sequences are finite. They all end at some point, and uh, and therefore there are no issues of convergence or anything like that. So as long as the uh, there are there are finitely many terms to worry about, you can you can uh, do them. Uh, uh, all the rules of like middle school algebra apply. So in particular, but they they take a very interesting form. So for example, uh, um, so so algebra. And the algebra would be, uh, as long as addition is involved, there are, there are a couple of things. One is um, uh, uh, like uh, um, splitting. Well, let, let me have a, say, uh, how should I put it? A plus B plus C plus D, okay, is equal to A plus B plus C plus D, right? It is also equal to A plus C and B plus D, okay? So a any, any way I can rearrange the, these terms and that that is... That is fine. So, so then the uh, the rule is um, it is actually called the sum rule. Sum a i plus b i i from one to n. The, ind the indices don't matter. Uh, so I can split it into two, just like with derivative. So summation of a i uh, of a, a i and summation b i. Okay, so just like I did the algebra of, of the third grade, I could uh, rearrange the terms. Except this time, I have, I have uh, each 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 term inside the parentheses has two terms, so totally I have two n terms. And then I just uh, uh, picked every odd term, put it here, picked every uh, even term, and put it there, and I have two sums. 
So this will be very convenient for, uh, for, uh, for integrals once we take that transition from limits to, uh, uh, from Riemann sums to, to the Riemann integral, uh, that this will be very convenient. Okay, so this is a purely algebraic fact, just on, on a more advanced level, we, we're not spe dealing with specific numbers anymore to begin with, and then second, the uh, second advance that we have to deal with, we will not even indicate how many exactly, many, many, how many we've got. Okay, so all we have, it's unspecified number n. Okay, another algebraic property is, so this is a summation, uh, is, is factoring. Uh, or rather, factoring versus uh, expanding. I don't want to say FOIL, but that's, that's what it's about. So if I have C A plus B, it is equal to C A plus C B, right? So I can do the same with summation, meaning that instead of having one sum here, I could have many. Okay, so, so this is what I'm talking about. It's called the constant multiple rule. So I have summation of C A I. Okay, so each term is is A uh, I multiplied by uh, by C, and then I can factor C out. That's that's all there is. So in both ways, it looks very much like those sum of uh, for limits or for differentiation, even though there are no limits here whatsoever. Okay, this is purely uh, third grade algebra. Okay, so that 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 factoring factoring thing that uh, I, as you can see, I moved from left to right. What has happened is I factored C out, and it's it ended up on the outside of the of my summation. Uh, well, as a warning, however, I have these two rules, and sometimes it is uh, uh, you know you do you do mathematics and just mo most of the time you do computations. You have to refer to a certain rule, and uh, and if you, there is no rule, then if there is no rule to refer to, then uh, uh, you have to ask yourself why there isn't, and usually because it's impossible. And one one of them is we look at just as a warning or an experiment. What about the what about this? Well. I hope that you will never make this mistake. So it is. It looks so simple that uh, uh, it is tempting to to do it this way because the big, no, it looks simple because it's not really, it doesn't really look simple. It is uh, in fact uh, uh, the the sigma sigmas make make it complicated, and that's why it hides from you something obvious, which which makes it impossible to uh, to be true. So you see why this cannot be true? So you've got two odds of them. So what? Well, you need, it would be the, uh, you can't take the summation of I uh, outside of the parentheses. Well, the, the, I know you, you cannot. Uh, I cannot apply the rule that the previous rule cannot, cannot apply, be applied here to, in order to demonstrate this rule. but. But the, uh, it, the, it should be, uh, uh, what I'm talking about is something more uh, kind of immediate, why this cannot be true. And the, uh, to verify some, some truths about, or, or untruths about, uh, about co complicated things, choose a very simple case of that complex thing. So the, what is the simplest case of a, of a summation is just choose n equal to 2. Then what, what I have on the right is, a1 plus A2 and B1 plus B2. The summation, that sigma, disappears once, once, you, once you specify N. So that's what I have on the right. A1 plus A2 times B, B1 plus B2. On the left I have, however, A1, B1 plus A2, B2. Right? So you see the problem? I surely hope you, you, you see the problem here. You're not multiplying A1 by B2. And right, right. So, so they cannot be equal. And the one, one thing, that there is a two terms here and on left and how many on right? Four, Four terms. Well, actually, unfortunately, that... It's really three once it's all... No, no it will be four terms. We'll, I don't, you, you can't simplify it. There, there is no way to simplify those four terms. It will be uh, these, these two plus uh, A1, B2, A and uh, uh, what is it, A2, B1. 
Okay, so four four terms are missing, and so so you, you that that is literally FOIL, right? So so if you don't don't see uh, uh, that this property cannot possibly work, it's it's uh, it, it it doesn't work on the simplest uh, uh, sense because uh, you for, you forgot the FOIL rule. Okay, so so and the, that certainly does 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 happen in the. Uh, people forget that uh, you cannot just uh, multiply the, those two in in this whole the first term by the first term, second term by the second term. That never works. Uh, you, you, there will be four terms. That's F O O I L. Those four terms is uh, is w w where it comes from. Okay, so that is the reason why we have only two rules because none none of the, of the other rules work. Frankly, uh, if you do try to multiply, well, it, it tell me how many. How many? Uh, you, you can guess how many terms this this would have. This term certainly is not going to work. But how many terms? N terms. N terms. How many total terms? A lot. It's it's like think about uh, think about a table. And here and there, the total will be n squared terms. So it's it's like a little table like this. Okay, and so in each term in the in the bottom on the x-axis will be multiplied by each term on the y-axis, and it means that yeah you have uh, n squared terms. So so that's why we don't try to combine uh, the sigma notation with multiplication because they just don't go together too well. But otherwise otherwise we have uh, for example this is this is one nice uh, fact uh, from. Uh, 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 about uh, sigma notation that uh, we didn't, didn't really discuss, but it's certainly worthwhile. Uh, and that is uh, this one. Summation of k's came from 1 to n. Uh, adding the first k elements of the, of the, of the integers. Okay? So uh, the answer is, well, let me show you the answer. It's like... Uh, It's like um, uh, the question you have: you have a tournament with k players, and the question is how many games you have to play. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Considering that uh, you cannot play yourself, so this this is out. It's a round robin tournament, whatever it could be. I don't know tennis. No, well, it doesn't happen a lot in tennis. But in some sports, what is a sport with round robins? Round robins. Oh, you <laughs> everybody plays everybody. Rather, rather than having uh, like this, like playoffs, it's everybody plays everybody. Pretty much like that. What? Free for all. Isn't that the term? Free for all? Everybody's on team by themselves? No. Like no, every team play, plays every other team. Like Big 12 Conference Championship. Right. Yeah. That that that's roughly. Yeah. So if this is. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty much it. Yeah. If you have uh, if you have a if you have a clear group of of, of teams and they are competing with each other only, the um, you, you that's what they, they have. Okay. This is a particular case. If you have four teams there, they will play uh, six six games. Well, I mean, if you if you do it at uh, home and uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the road, then it will be twelve, right? So these squares will also reappear. So so that's why usually you you'll see if it is round robin tournament. Uh, maybe there is another way. There is a word for it, different rather than round robin. Then you have to exclude these because you cannot play yourself. And yeah, it is usually or often you have two, and then you just. Uh, Put the results, and then you go horizontally to see how many points you've got, and then that gives you current standing. But I don't think it is very common, other than what I'm thinking about, like like a college basketball or some football t too, right? And but otherwise, it's it's not really that common. Uh, the playoffs is more common, right? Well, what, what about baseball? So they have playoffs in the end, but they it seems like they play so many matches that they probably play I just I don't know that's I have to admit so uh, they probably play every team plays every other team and maybe one and more than once is the area there to. right but how many times do they play each other well, just just twice have consecutive games won't they like a team travels to the city oh. and they play the red yeah. and then they'll play them for a couple no let's let's say instead of, let's say football instead and suppose they they have conferences and in the each conference they play 
it like this, right? Yeah. So that may and they play two each. So so then they that would be uh, uh, and then well, first of all, you see where where the, the summation comes from. It is three, two, and one. So so you add the consecutive number, uh, consecutive consecutive integers. So four teams is, is say you have a conference of four teams and they play each at home. Then then you have to add the consecutive one plus two plus three and then multiply by two. Okay. So we're not going to multiply by two. Uh, but uh, the um, you you can you can compute the uh, where you you can figure out what the answer is. Can you figure out the number? So if I have n here and n there, so once again n teams, right? So I exclude the one ones in the middle. Okay. So and then I have to add these. How m what do I get? One half, almost, almost. Uh, it, 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 first of all, uh, it, that that formula wouldn't work because what if as an odd? You 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 what you forgot to do? You forgot to exclude the diagonal. One half n squared minus. Uh, what? How many squares on the diagonal? No, no, no. It's n, yeah, yeah, and as many as rows as as many as columns, right? So, so that way, uh, whether n is odd or even n squared minus n is is uh, is uh, even, and so you can divide by two. So uh, that is the answer: n n minus one over two. Okay. So there are other formulas like that, and we use one of them. Uh, you might remember. Well, let me write it out. Uh, the one we when we com we we early on computed the by taking the limit, remember it now, not to, well, let me just bring it up, uh, up here. Um, we computed the area under the graph of the, of the, that's not it, of a parabola. Remember, of a parabola. Hmm. No, where is, where is that thing? Do you, do you remember what I'm talking about? Now let's, let's review. So this is how, let's just go over these pages just quickly. It's good anyway. Uh, so the graph of the, that's the, that's the approximation of the area under the, under the uh, half circle, which gives you approximate value of the uh, circle. Okay, so that certainly goes way, way back to Greeks. And then, uh, 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 without we didn't take the limit. We didn't take the limit of this in order to have a, an absolutely accurate answer. And this, this is what our computation I'm talking about is uh, the area under the parabola. And then we went through all these uh, Riemann computations. And this is the summation over here that in yellow, uh, the sum of the squares, rather the sum of the consecutive integers, the sum of the squares of consecutive integers. And the this is the answer is is here. Right, so so I I can just write it up, even though it doesn't really match what I've got here. Uh, well, okay, let me. Okay, so let me just write it out. So the sum of of the consecutive squares from one to n is that formula, m and n, n squared over two. Uh, n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus uh, n over 6. Okay, so so once again, there's a compact way of writing that that sum. That's that the compactness is is what uh, we try to introduce as necessary. We progress from uh, more simple to more complex ideas, but also they, those ideas sometimes just become cumbersome. Uh, I'm I, I'm I'm teaching uh, calculus three right now, and you can imagine that the same thing only. Uh, there are three dimensions. Okay, so so every number is uh, uh, there is no numbers. There are triples of numbers every time, and those uh, triples of numbers, and they have triple indices, and the triple summations. This is this is what you have to face, and then the peep, the things start to pile up, and and you have to every time you just cannot. It's just too much. It doesn't just kind of doesn't fit it fit into your head, and you have to make the uh, notation more compact even though more complex and uh, behind every little uh, term there will be a lot of 
uh, a complex thing. So it doesn't make things much easier, but at least it's manageable. That's what? That's sorority on campus. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's review uh, how we get from Riemann sums to inter Riemann integrals. So, uh, so the Riemann integral, uh, given a function, y equal f of x, uh, natural a, b. Um, a could be, to begin with, we, we choose a less than b. Okay, then we have a partition of the of the uh, of the interval uh, a b cl a closed interval also in in finite too so to begin with so we have x naught a is equal to x naught less than x one less than x n so n intervals or segments x n which is b okay so uh, at this time let's let's make it slightly more general so we're not cutting into equal parts. They could be just as well different. Okay, so, uh, so and, and then it means that the lengths are also different. Well, they are supposed to be. Uh, delta xk is equal to xk plus 1 minus xk. Uh, xk plus 1 minus xk. So this is, once again, this will be, if this is xk and this is xk plus 1, then this is delta xk, the length. Okay, so that is a partition, just, just a, a bunch of intervals uh, thrown in. Uh, let's call it p, partition p, and then, uh, uh, and then the, there, well, that's not yet. Uh, there is one more item here, and that's the sample point, points the sample points, one in each interval. Okay, so C1 in x1, x2, uh, x0, x1, C2 in x1, x2, Cn in xn minus 1, xn. Okay, so, so we, we, we're dropping a point in each of these intervals. C1, C2, C3, Cn. Okay, so that is the sample points. They are not sampled. It's, it's not like we're, we're sampling points. We're, uh, these are points used for sampling. Sampling what? Sampling the function. Okay, so, so sample the function, meaning that there will be f of C1, f of C2, f of Ck, uh, Cn. Okay, so the, the, this is actual sampling. This is sampling of f. And then we form the Riemann sum. Then the Riemann sum of, of this sampled partition is And I'm going to use the C sigma notation, so we wouldn't be wait, would have been wasted the time. I from 1 to n, f of C i delta x i. Okay, so all the uh, buildup still works, so it is still the areas under the graph of the areas of the bars under the graph of the function. So if I take that partition on left and, and use it to... Uh, uh, now in conjunction with my, my uh, uh, function, so it will look like, like this, possibly randomly distributed points, uh, and then they are sampled like this, where those sample points are also is, is, is unspecified, so these are sample points, and these sample points give, give me the heights of those bars. Okay, so the, uh, the bars will be, let me try again. like this, this is still A and B, and I'm going to have, I'm using those heights as, as heights, but this time of bars, a little bit lower, about the same, a bit higher and a bit higher, like this, okay, so the, the, these are, these are the bars, and this is where they come from,
Okay, and so the sum, is the, the Riemann sum is the, uh, the total area. Okay, each term is, is that uh, width, uh, the base of the rectangle times the height, and all together we have uh, the total area. Okay, so the, uh, the some specific, specific Riemann sums are the left end Riemann sum, the right end, and the midpoint. So meaning the in each interval I will be, I could choose so that's interval xk xk plus one and then I could choose uh, or from this interval I need to find a pick a sample point I could pick this one I could pick that one or I could pick this one so generally speaking it is all random but some specific if you you might be asked to compute a specific Riemann sum so the, these are the three most common okay so. Uh, uh, Specifically, I could, you could actually write the formula, so CK is equal to XK, CK is equal to XK plus 1, and CK is equal to, what's the midpoint? The formula for the midpoint? Um, well, that divided by two. The sum of those divided by 2. Okay, so, well... Uh, and so, so the, the point being, it's uh, the, the same choice is, is made for all the uh, all the uh, rectangles. Okay, so um, uh, let me compute once. I have two minutes left. Just uh, a one Riemann sum computed uh, as some of the simplest problems that you might encounter will be, say, uh, f of x is equal to uh, say x squared. Compute. Riemann sum, uh, right end, say, right end Riemann sum over interval, say, 0, 2. Okay, so a little picture certainly goes a long way. So I take my interval 0, 2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and n equal to 4. Okay, so, so the, the, this is what makes it specific. The function, the interval, the number of intervals, if, if it's, it's, it's not specified, otherwise its assumption is that it's a same, same length. Okay, so same, same length. So then delta x is equal to uh, 2 minus 0 over 4, and it is 0.5. So the intervals are uh, 0.5, so this is 2, and these are uh, 1, 1 1.5, 0 0.5 and 0. So these are the uh, the partition. This is the partition and these are the uh, the intervals, <clears throat> those four. And so delta x is 0.5, that's easy. And now uh, we're choosing the right ends. We're choosing the right end, so this will be this one. Let me put it this way. One, so that refers to the first uh, interval. This one, that one, and this one. So, so as you can see, there are four endpoints. I'm sorry, five endpoints and four uh, uh, sample points. Okay, so these are the choices. And then, uh, if necessary, I have my graph here, whatever the whatever it looks like. I, I use my sample points in order to uh, find the heights of my bars. So, so that's what I do. I list so uh, sample points are 0.5. 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, okay? So f of ck, so these are ck's right here, and it will be, so I just squared, so 0.5 squared, 1.0 squared, 1.5 squared, 2.0 squared, and so I have here 0.25, 1, uh, uh, 2, 2, uh, 2 to 5, and 4, okay? So not forget now the next one is to, to multiply by delta x, so by, by 0.5, so it will be 0.25 times 0.5, which is 0.125, then 1 times 0.5, which is 0.5, 2, 0.25 times 0.5, which is 1.125, uh, and 4 times 0.5 is equal to 2. Add Okay, so this is how I'm progressing from that sample points, computing squares, then multiply those squares by the, uh, the widths, 
Okay, I have now these in the numbers available. Now just add them together. So what do I have? Uh, was it three? Seven five? Is it? Okay. So that's that's the answer. It approximates the area under the graph. Okay. So we'll we'll finish this tomorrow.